Hey, it's meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen here with the Nine News Weather Impact Team with a quick look at your forecast for today and beyond. We'll be warming things up unusually warm, especially on the Front Range and the Eastern Plains today. And we'll have a few more days like that before we have a change in the forecast. But we started out pretty cool today. Let's take a look at those temperatures that were reported in this morning here with the low temperatures. 44 degrees in Denver. That's one of the colder temperatures we've had. The coldest temperature we've had so far this year is 39 degrees. And that came on October the 1st. And that 39 degree temperature is the warmest low temperature that we've ever had this late in the season. So we're still looking for that first freeze, which would have normally have come and gone here in Denver, but we're still waiting for that. Did reach freezing out there on the Northeast Plains today in Yuma County, Phillips, Sedgwick County. Uh, got some freezing temperatures out there, 30 degrees in Yuma, and some upper 20s this morning in the high country. You'll notice that haze out there once again, not too thick. You can actually kind of see the foothills from this shot. You can normally, from this angle, you could usually see them pretty clearly. So that wildfire smoke is having an impact once again today. And it will for the next couple of days as those wildfires continue to burn out there in Utah, Idaho, and Wyoming. The temperature is starting to rise up pretty nicely already here in the Denver metro area. 71 degrees at the Nine News Studios in south downtown Mile High City. 69 degrees out at DIA right now. Temperatures likely headed up there towards the 80 degree mark. So here's a look at the October summary so far with high temperatures. All the red Days that you see there marked are the where their high temperatures have been warmer than normal and 12 out of the 13 days so far have been warmer than normal and that one day on the third was only one degree off of the normal temperature which on that day is 71 degrees and we'll add probably five more red days for, uh, in a row as we go through this week before we finally had a, another blue one likely on Saturday. We'll talk about that, but with all this heat accumulating, you know that we are one of the warmest starts to October. Yesterday's somewhat cooler day with a high of 71, we did drop down to second place all time, but we will reclaim num the number one spot as we go through to today, and we'll keep that at least going through into Saturday. And even if we do drop down to, let's say, low temperatures in the middle 30s and highs in the middle 50s on Saturday, we'll likely still be able to maintain our lead because all the other years throughout history would have been getting their second or third freeze at this point in the season. So we don't really have those, warm, those cold temperatures in the forecast. So we'll most likely keep our, the, in this top five range all through the entire month of October, a, a very unusually warm October we are having, and that comes after a, an unusually warm September and August. So we do have a little bit of precipitation moving through. The temperature is certainly a big story, but the dry air has also been part of the story. A lot of us have not seen rain in a, in a very long time. Some areas, not since that storm on September the 22nd, uh, but we do have a little bit of, uh, the, the mountains have had a little different story. They've, they've had at least some isolated showers here and there, and we'll ha see some more isolated showers today. Here's the future cast looking at about five o'clock this afternoon. We'll have some isolated showers, mainly in the higher elevations, except uh, maybe in the SLV, the San Luis Valley could get a little bit more of a substantial shower and in an area that is off of the terrain. Otherwise, most of these showers very light and in the higher terrain. Even on the Palmer Divide there, it looks like it'll be just off the I-25 corridor, but we stay pretty dry here on the Front Range and the Northeast Plains. We will have the smoke though. Everything, everybody gets the smoke and the wildfires continue to burn in Utah and Idaho and Wyoming and the airflow generally pushes that smoke right into northeast Colorado where the thicker wildfire smoke is. You can see just about, we, hey, we could see haze just about anywhere in the state again today, but the thicker smoke would be on the northeast plains and parts of the uh, high country here. These are forecast high temperatures for 
uh, Tuesday, looking ahead here one day in advance, we'll cool things back down a little bit again on Tuesday. We'll have kind of a persistent northeast or northerly wind coming throughout the day on Tuesday. With, we'll have a little bit of a bite in the air, and that should be able to prevent our temperatures. It may even be difficult to hit the 70 degree mark on the front range here, but I think briefly tomorrow we will break over that 70 degree mark, which is about six or seven degrees warmer than normal, but still a, a cooler day compared to other things that we've seen. And then we're looking for the cool down, the, the bigger cool down, which comes on the weekend. Here we pick up the jet stream forecast on Wednesday. You see the high pressure ridge that has been over the center of the country here will start to break down on on Wednesday as this next storm pr system approaches from the Pacific Northwest and the forecasting modeling has really shown this low pressure system dives almost straight down south deep into the Great Basin and become cut off from the jet stream. And so we're looking at a, s a scenario here where we have a, a weak cutoff low getting blocked by high pressure out in front of it. And what that means, uh, in part it does kind of take some of the energy out of the system, but what it mainly means is it's just a slower progression. And so instead of a one or two day impact, we could have a three, four, maybe even a five day impact from this one little trough of low pressure as it slowly moves out and we will have an opportunity to break some winter milestones here in Denver. We're still looking for that first freeze. If that first freeze does come on Saturday, October the 19th, that would be significantly almost two weeks later than average. And if we somehow skate through this weekend storm without hitting freezing, which is possible, if not likely, we would most likely start approaching the record-breaking latest freeze in Denver history, which uh, once you get towards Halloween, it's pretty unusual. Only three times in history have we wait, had to wait till after Halloween to get that first freeze. So this is all part of that unusually warm start to fall and, and October. And the, as far as the average first snow in Denver, that, uh, the, that average is October 18th. And it is possible with this storm, I and mean, we have a storm system coming in and at the right time of year, so climatologically speaking, there is a chance to have that uh, first snow accumulation, but it does not appear very likely at all. So um, we will likely kind of push that average first snow, that first snow in Denver a little bit later than normal. And so here's your seven day forecast. And when you see all that information laid out here on kind of like a smartphone, smone, uh, smartphone format, you can see the impacts of that storm starting. Really the impacts of that storm start on Wednesday and Thursday because the winds will kick up as we know ahead of those storm systems and the dry air will come in. So we're most likely looking at some fire weather uh, elevated fire weather, if not possibly critical fire weather on Wednesday and Thursday. And that will most likely be out on the Eastern Plains, but could involve some areas on the Front Range. And even if we don't get a warning on the Front Range, we'll be very close to threshold. So dicey fire weather conditions on Wednesday and Thursday. And then the precipitation comes in on Friday, probably Friday evening or Friday night and there's a good chance that we get at least some scattered showers in the area. The computer models are putting out uh, solutions anywhere between a tenth of an inch to almost three quarters of an inch in some areas. So not probably not rain for everybody on the Front Range, but at least quite a few of us will have a chance to get our first precipitation in a very long time. Uh, some of us since that September 22nd storm. And then on Saturday, this will most likely carry over, the precipitation carrying over into Saturday. And we, it, there is a chance um, with those temperatures getting down in the low 30s that we could see a brief switch over to a rain-snow mix on Saturday. That looks like kind of the best case scenario here with the most recent modeling is just to get a brief rain-snow mix before the sun comes up on Saturday. 
And so snow accumulation in Denver is very unlikely, uh, although certainly possible. And then going, in, you know, in, the, in that Saturday time frame. So uh, most likely just some light, cool rain in certain areas on Saturday morning. And as far as the temperatures go, you see the forecast there for Saturday morning being 36 degrees right now. So uh, the first freeze of the year is not in the forecast, but you can see it's very close to possible. So we'll be right along borderline with this storm as it comes in to breaking some of those milestones. And then because of the way that the storm gets cut off and blocked by that high pressure system out in front of it, it may carry some of these uh, kind of cooler, wetter impacts into Sunday. So right now it does look like there's at least a 25% chance for some of us to get an, a morning shower um, on a early s Sunday morning, but that will most likely kind of clear out bef as the, you know, the sun comes up and we get going on our day. So it'll be a, s a slow warm up on Sunday, but we, we may get a few showers, but it's possible that we get above that 60 degree mark on Sunday. And then Monday looks like we could have one of those classic October days where the sun comes out and it's, a, and it's just a cool, breezy day. So the real October looks like we'll at least finish the month of October, october -y, since we the first 20 days was it looks pretty much nil as far as that goes. So thanks for tuning into this forecast. Hopefully that helps you out in any way with your planning that as we go through the week. Keep an eye on that storm system because as you know as when it gets closer to the date of the storm the detailing in the modeling becomes a little bit more clear and so we'll have uh, more answers as far as timing and how much precipitation and how cold it's going to get once we get closer. So thanks a lot for joining us here and have a great day.